This is the Art of Lesbos. Uh, it is now one of, again, one of the famous entrance gates. I come to an end now, so you can still stand. You see, now the neighboring continent is Asia. This is here part of Europe and the Greek island, but it's so close off the, the coast that it's not even 12 miles. So it is the, the line uh, between the national waters is here drawn in the middle, between, and these are kilometers now. You see how close it is? And now you have refugees, migrants, and so on, people who try to, to sail over there with tiny little rubber dinghies, without an engine even. So just with the wind, because they say, no, you can't miss if you start from here. These are, yeah, then you just drift over there. And now imagine you have here European units with the order to stop them and to divert these boats. But how is it possible? Because there's no open water. The moment they cross this line, they're already there. They're in Europe and they have a right to be at least uh, asked about their whatever they want. If they want to need asylum, so they have a right to apply for. This is the, the scene in, in, in Rio, this is here Europe and this is Asia. This is the Molivos region, after look uh, very nice beaches. And this is what you find there. Um, remainings of, of rubber boats. At first, when I saw it years ago, I thought, but look at tourists, they're playing around the whole season and then they leave the, uh, the rubber behind. It's not. This is something else. Although they are burning the, the boats daily basis, the next morning you will find more. Sometimes you would say, okay, apparently here somebody arrived. This is not a life-saving device, it's just a working vest that you couldn't swim in them, symbolically. Yeah. But apparently somebody changed wet clothes, so maybe they had, and this is what we see, mm -hmm. they have it in a, in a plastic bag, they change clothes, and what are they doing now? They arrived now on, uh, on an island, European island, what they're doing immediately, they ask for the police. Everybody. Why is it? Because they know the most dangerous is that the Coast Guard would find you and they do whatever they want. I show you The boats used are like children's toys. I, as a father of two now grown up girls, I, 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 I would accept that in the case I leave my children playing with this and something happens that I'm responsible. And this is what's written here. It's not a life-saving device. Do not leave a child unattended. But you have whole families, up to eight people, crossing into Europe with this. It's uh, unbelievable how small it is. And Afghan people, and I, I, I forgot to introduce, I brought a, a friend here, uh, Soma Ibrahim. She is from Afghanistan. I know you are also, but many Afghan people can't swim because lack of water in the region where they might come from. So they are here in a very, very um, dangerous situation. And some of the wrecks you find, they have these traces of whatsoever. We have had more than 100 documented interviews with survivors of such a thing, who would say like, we were attacked at night, out of the sea, we were so afraid, it was suddenly there, it was dark, they produced a knife like this and they started cutting our DNA. <coughs> so, this is how it looks. Now what the Coast Guard says, I give you both sides, is Oh no, 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 this is what they do themselves. They destroy the boats because they are afraid we could tie them back out at sea. Admitting that is indeed what they do. Completely illegal. Okay, so you have two, two sides of it. As a matter of fact, you find boats like this one, and I'm still angry myself, I didn't bring it mm -hmm. to an institution that could really see what happened to this boat, because this is cut in two, like with a laser sword. This is impossible. It's, it's not that at sea somebody would have done it with a knife, and also not people arriving and then destroy the boat, that it could not be torn outside. This is something else, but I have no idea. Unfortunately, I left it there, so I just have the picture. Some of the boats, you find them in the waterline, so it is not very 
um, uh, realistic to suppose that people arrive. Because what, uh, howsoever you come in, you bring the boat ashore and you don't have uh, a lot of uh, time here. So if you see a boat there and there's no indication for people arriving, so probably it's just the wreck of a boat and no people who arrive. Some cases we know it. They use wooden boats, a boat either stolen or bought. It's very difficult to say because all the boats used immediately are declared stolen because the Turkish fisherman, who maybe sold this boat for a really good price, he does not want to be involved in such trafficking whatsoever. So he said, well, it's stolen! Now these guys here, they try to, to, to do it in a storm. Because they suppose that the Kuska would not go out in a storm. Maybe right. But they didn't know that just you see here, this is the island of Kios, by the way. This is Turkey, <laughs> this is Europe. Uh, you see these rocks here. It's in the waterline. Mm -hmm. If you imagine there's a storm and the, and the wages are high, so you can't see them. It's just, you know. And so here, just maybe 15 meters from the shore, 15 people died. John, among them a baby. I can tell you stories. And those who are living here on the front line, this is how we call it, they're really, they have their very personal experiences. This is from January this year. This is what's washed upon the shores of European islands. And in this particular case, I can't go into details, we will have somebody from this, uh, from, from, from Lesbos in our summer academy, just, just to tell you, maybe some of you can agree with us. Uh, a boatload of Afghans in this time, now more and more Syrian uh, refugees are arriving. And then to bury them is something that refugees try to, and they have to, organize among themselves. If activists, supporters there, ask the authorities, please give us the SIM cards so we can find maybe relatives or beloved ones so we can inform them. No. And the wreck is just a few hundred meters outside and we know that there's at least one lady and a child inside and they're not going to, to get it. So, it is really harsh. Now, see the Coast Guard and I really investigate this. Here outside you have this lafette where you can put automatic weapons and this is indeed, they are shooting at refugees both and they even admit it. See me investigating here, I don't show this <laughs> normally. Um, I had to and you have to, to talk and you have to go through and to just try to understand. And what would they tell you? No, 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 we're just shooting at the engine. And we only shoot in cases where traffickers are on board. Well, hard to see. Yeah. And if you see the weapons they're used, this is from the Green Navy. Four years ago, they refused to engage in this kind of activities, saying that we are here for war, not for migrants and refugees. But now they are involved. So see how it is more and more coming closer to a war scenario somehow. Now, it is very, it is absolutely forbidden to take pictures of these units. Really, don't do it in Greece because they will bring you to prison immediately, they don't ask. So, as my lawyer says, I have to, uh, to point out that this picture here was taken by coincidence. I don't know, my camera was on the table and tucked it inside <laughs> And the second one. Yeah. What makes this boat so interesting? You could never guess. It is, the right answer would be nothing. Although this is a boat of the special units of the Coast Guard of Greece, 18 of these units are around there, it has no name, no number, no flag and no lights. My captain, Stefan Schmidt from the Kapanam, where you will meet him in the summer, will be there. When I told him this, yeah, that there were European unions going out at night and they saw the guys with the combat uniforms and you would hear the shooting, shooting even from, from the seaside. He said, oh no, sorry, but this must be a misunderstanding. It is impossible. 
When I proved him afterwards, then he would say, okay, there's only one scenario, it is in war times, where European official authorities would act in such a way. And they shoot at boats, as I tell, tell you on this, this was, now they really got the wrong ones, tourist, to brave uh, Afri uh, Greek, Greek people, Greek three Greek men, fishing at night with this boat. What happened? Uh, when the boat, uh, the boat was brought back, one out of three was dead. So, uh, what happened? Well, the Coast Guard said, we saw a boat and we thought maybe we should control them. When we approached, they just turned around and tried to escape to Turkey. So we opened fire and they had no flag and they had no light. Now see, this is the sea's boat. It still has the Greek and the European flag. <laughs> Whereas the authorities don't have it, maybe. And then what the people here said, the three men, was, okay, we were out there, we were fishing. We saw a petrol boat approaching. Now, damn, we drank alcohol, which is forbidden, let's see. We were in trouble. So what the, our captain, the owner of the boat, did immediately, he raised his hands. And then we saw from the boat a tiny little point that were firing at. And the very moment then, we were, the debris was flying around, so we tried to seek cover, but too late for one of them. And uh, if you see the injuries, he had, had two fingers lost here, up here, and a spray mark, you know, the, from automatic weapons. Okay. So, now this case, they had to pay about 200,000 euros or so for the family. And the but imagine you know, how many cases we don't know. What's going on. See the boat really, like, shot into him. Now, back to Samos here, just as a relief for us all. Let's see something nice. Yeah, but here, this is Turkey and this is Greece. And at the closest, uh, uh, have you been to Samos maybe? Samos? Samos? For sure. I'm sure about that. Rodos, I know. Rodos, okay, but Austrians love it. But here, the closest is 700 meters between the continents. Now imagine. What does it mean for a unit who has the order to protect Europe from others coming in? Okay, these guys here, they uh, uh, obviously made it, and as if they're smiling, they had no whatsoever encounters at night. They have to gather here at certain spots. Nobody is allowed to talk to them. Nobody is allowed to bring them water, nor food, nothing. You're not allowed to take them in your car. Even bus drivers are allowed, because only the police has the right to take them. If not, then you are in trouble because you are suspected uh, to deal with illegal immigration. Yeah. People are brought to centers. This is amazing because it was in the, in the center of the of, uh, pittoresque Bati, which is uh, the capital city of Samos, ancient tobacco factory, 19th century. And if you, you would walk along there like tourists and then suddenly, uh, I love this picture, I'm, I'm not a photographer, but look, there he is again, my, my favorite German professor from Osnabrück, yeah, with his wife, well, let's see, buy some fish or so. And this is the center, and I mean, you need all your imagination. Now it's not looking here, you will see a pale face there. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe if you get me to put closer lights, but you, you, you understand. There's somebody sitting there in prison who, one thing for sure, did not commit any crime. But he's there and he has to be there, and not only him, but many people. So if you walk around there, then they would, you would hear like, hello, hello, mister. You look up there, and there are many. Like guys from Afghanistan, yeah, and they would, it's just chatting a bit, yeah. And you understand that this kind of encounter would shock maybe tourists, so European Union found another solution for the problem. A new camp, a bit of, in the mountains, somewhere, and I could uh, walk around there at times where it wasn't opened yet. Look, the building materials, it is barbed wire, the NATO version, and look what I found. This is now really amazing. It is a children's playground. No way to bring children to prison in Europe. Impossible. 
And the authorities say, well, we don't. I say, but, well, you know, this is the parents, it's not us. The parents would insist to have their children inside the camp. Because when we ask them, don't you think it's better to have the children with you, to a mother? That means that they would really divide them. Then the mother says, yes, better I have them with them. But why are people in this camp? As I said, we are here on an island. Nobody tries to escape from there. They have committed nothing than arriving there without an invitation. They can't run away. But you see, a full-size camp here, the, the dogs running at night. And I really pray to the Lord that it's not German engineering building all these camps all over there. Some of them, here you see now, they are provided certain papers after a time in the camp that can be up to one and a half years in prison with the whole family. But then they give you a paper that, okay, go and leave the country within the next two weeks. But where? Where could they go? So they gather somewhere. I want to come to this. As I said, there are European cities in Africa. So Spanish cities of Ceuta and Melilla on Moroccan soil for some very important historic reasons from the Crusaders uh, time. So, uh, until 1992, the fence there was 120 centimeters high. Okay, at least it was like a garden fence, just saying, okay, now you are entering Spain. Well, amazingly, when the Iron Curtain fell, at the same moment, Europe started building up the walls and fences elsewhere. And for the elderly here, it is amazing because we can't remember that there was ever a, pro a problem reported until this time. Africans in their boats, they were free to sail into the port of Marseille. They could sell their fish or whatsoever, drugs, maybe, yes. Yeah, but, and now, out of the sun, this is no longer possible because we have now the Schengen zone and we have our security measures building up the fences. So people now blocked in this, here in the Moroccan woods, at a very special moment in October 2005, they thought, if we try it all together from various places to climb this, maybe some of us will make it. So with their letters out of you know, wood beams that I have found somewhere or so, they tried to make it. Indeed, it was a good idea, but 60 of them died on these nights in October. This is what the refugees say. The official number is 16. <coughs> you will always have the difference between what the refugees say themselves. And some of them have been shot, but it turned out that nobody shot at them. Although they are Spanish... Oh, this is now... It always happens to me, I have to apologize. This has nothing to do with the external borders of the EU. This is a shot taken from my room in Berlin, where I grew up, from my parents' house, because I grew up just 50 meters from the wall so-called wall of shame at the time, you remember? And so, from my childhood, I know all these fences, dogs running, on lines, the lights, the bulbs, the shooting and everything. But um, I have to remove this. <laughs> Sorry, it has nothing to do with the situation nowadays. Back to Ceuta, Melilla. You see the, the Spanish uh, special forces, 650 of them. They are shooting, yes, but they say only with rubber ammunition. So we don't know who killed Isanuk. What a fortress it is, Hanami and Ceuta. It's much more sophisticated. It's the same pattern, it's the same as we saw, you saw it from the Hungarian border than from Berlin. And, but it is a more perfect uh, fortress. And the number of victims is much higher than the whole time of the Cold War. Now again, German bad joke. Somebody invented, like, we have these uh, children's and family games. Uh, and somebody said here, this is a new game, you know, you play it with the family sitting in the evening and then like on the table, and here it says, uh, Journey to Europe, uh, discover Europe's uh, frontiers playing. Yeah. Okay, um, but it's not that funny. Uh, we look at a, at a 
last spot, promise. Here, this would be the European part of Turkey, but don't, you know, mess up. It is a European part of Turkey, but it doesn't mean that Turkey belongs to Europe in any. Uh, it's just there. Mm -hmm. But you have a frontier here now between Turkey, which is Asia, and uh, Bulgaria and and uh, and Greece, which is now a hot spot when it comes to so-called illegal border crossings, and this part is mined. Mm -hmm. So now this for me is very very interesting because nobody talks about it. There are up to 1.5 million landmines on this line along the bordering river of Avros. They were not laid out now, but starting from World War I, which was the Balkan Wars in this region, 1912 so. Then again in the Second World War, then again in the Cyprus crisis in the 1970s. And unfortunately they're still there. There are signs set out, warning signs, but if you come to this river, at night, somebody brings you there maybe and says, see the, the lights over there, you go there to the police. And you don't know that 150 meters on the other shore, you're running into the minefield. So these were uh, young Georgians, when the last little war was with Russia, I think six years ago or so, and they did not want to die in the name of whatsoever nation, but they said, we were going to Europe to apply for asylum deserting from the forces, but unfortunately they died here in Europe. Now this is uh, my last slide. It is not a joke, it is true. The Frontex troops, they organize a photo competition, you can find it on the, on the net, but you will not find a single picture that came, comes even close to what I had to share with you. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I mentioned it before, we are organizing now, I have the privilege to organize for the next summer academy here. As you're there, you are heartily welcome uh, just to, to share, to, to come to be with us. You will see a lot of what we were talking today. For the